What's up, friends? Welcome into another edition of ACC Baseball, etc. As always, presented by our good friends at Pitch Logic, the system used by players, coaches, scouts, and instructors at all levels of play, from youth leagues to the big leagues. The easy to use and affordable technology makes the platform accessible to every player at every level. All the metrics, all the features used at the highest level. You can go to pitchlogic.com for more information. Um, I'm Darren Vaught. Gravy's out. He actually, you might have seen him in Bristol, Connecticut, ESPN's headquarters. He was in studio at ACC Network talking some college ball. Finally, we got him off the major league beat for a little bit this season. But anyways, I'm here. We've got to fill in. She is a friend of the program, a wonderful reporter, play-by-player, host. Danny Wexelman is with me. <laughs> Danny, how are you? I am so excited. I'm not sure I can fill Gravy's shoes. I did see that he got to, I think he had some iconic moments, like life-changing moments in Bristol, and I'm really happy for him, and I'm going to do my best gravy impression for you. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, so what you're, what you're referring to, I assume, is he had told us he was finally going to work up the courage to hop over into the, the ESPN uh, hockey studio <laughs> and introduce himself to, I saw Steve Levy took the photo of him and Messier and Subban like that. It, it was so great. And then someone took a photo of Levy taking the photo, the photo of, of the three of them. <laughs> um, really enjoyable stuff. I'm glad Danny got that, that moment. Other Danny, I've, I've got a, I've got a different double Danny. For, you have double Danny listening and not yeah. watching. I've got to, got to make people aware that it's a different Danny. So just like I'm you're working with a different Darren. That's right. The other Darren. I, I have another Darren. You have another Danny. Often, though, I think what people don't know is I still get confused. Um, people think I'm a man a lot. Like if you haven't met me and you're emailing me, it happened. I'm not going to name names, but it happened recently with um, <laughs> us, an SID and they thought I was a man and they went to the student and they were like, do you want to do the interview with him? And the student actually grateful for them said it's actually a her. So uh, I am the girl and he is the boy. I think that's probably the easy way to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, all right. So we are here to, among other things, talk ACC baseball. And um, I, we, you and I have texted a little bit. We've got some, some, some topics that we're going to run through. Uh, I, I think we have to start with Wake Forest, right? They, Let's do it. I, I, Nick Kurtz is obviously doing what Nick Kurtz does. The easiest player of the week vote of the season so far. Um, yeah. Maybe, well, maybe second to, to Drew Burris week one. Um, but anyway, <laughs> he's obviously doing what he's doing. But as a team, they are, and I alluded to this last week, I think they're becoming who we thought they were going to be all along. Health was an issue to begin with, and they had to just get some guys right and get some guys back. So Danny Graves and I were texting about it. Yeah, because he shot me a note and was like another Kurtz Homer, you know, because that's what he does. <laughs> he just texts me things like that. Yeah. Um, and so I, I said, I told him, looking at their schedule, which is not necessarily easy, but looking at their schedule, three of their remaining four ACC series include teams that are currently ahead of them in the standings. Um, but looking at the schedule, I was like, man, if they don't fumble games outside of series with other ACC teams, mm -hmm. I think they're in play for a top eight, which sounds bananas given the, given the start that they had. Um, they've got FSU and Clemson at home. Those are the keys, right? NC yeah. State's the other team that's currently ahead of them in the ACC standings. They play that series in Raleigh to finish the year. Yeah. But starting with FSU – I'm telling you, Danny, I think if they get six of those nine, like they're probably, and, and it depends on other teams and what they do, but like, I think they're probably in the mix to still be a top eight national seed. I, I am so excited to talk about them right now. Who doesn't love a slow burn? I think in our generation and the way that we consume 
content and media these days and consume sports and just entertainment that you want that instant gratification. And that applies to the team that was ranked number one to start the season. And they have stumbled out of the blocks, man. They are like that baby deer that's just learning how to walk and figure things out. Like that's the picture I have in my head of Wake Forest. And they've dealt with different injuries. Nick Kurtz has not been himself. They The ACC has gotten better, right? Look what the other teams in the conference did. And so all these things combined has made for a really rough go. And I was lucky because I called the Friday night Virginia Tech Wake Forest game. I was very excited to get to see Chase Burns pitch on Friday night. I was excited to see how Nick Kurtz might be. I had heard that he was coming back from a, a minor injury this season, and he was on his way back. Virginia Tech, one of the best offenses in the country, not just the ACC, but in the country. And Nick Kurtz was ridiculous. Chase Burns, career 15 high, uh, career high 15 strikeouts in that game. And so that for me felt like, all right, they got their groove back and they are, they found their stride. And I think the adversity is going to benefit them down the road, right? At, at two weeks ago, last year in 2023, they had only lost four games only lost four games. And so now you look at what their schedules looked like and they have, they haven't been able to get going. And then, so finally against Virginia tech and then last weekend, uh, back-to-back series wins now. And so they're on a roll, but Nick Kurtz is healthy. Merrick Houston is healthy. They have freshmen Javar Williams and Cam Nelson have been very impactful because those guys have been hurt. And you also have Seaver King, who always seems to creep in and find and play that role and come up in those clutch big moments. And so the offense, I feel like, is finally clicking. And then you have Chase Burns on Friday night, who's outstanding. Josh Hartle settling in maybe a little bit more. But for me, it's the offense. The offense is, it was just abysmal, I feel like. And they really couldn't figure it out. And now this is a 500 team. And to your point, I think that they are they are rejoining the conversation. They are back in the picture. And they knew all along, right? They didn't care what anybody yeah. else said. We're out here all chatterboxes talking about it. They knew what they had. But if they don't get healthy and they don't stay healthy, then I'm way more concerned. But right now, th- like the way that Nick Kurtz is playing, like he is he is a bad man. He is torturing <laughs> ACC pitching right now. 13 home runs in his last nine games. And when he when he ended his streak of having at least one home run in a game, I think it was Saturday in the series, he yeah. just bounced back yesterday and was like, okay, I'm just going to hit two and make up for that. It, unbelievable. Like, unbelievable stuff. I actually – Larry Sorensen, who um, does ACC and X games when they're at, at Wake Forest – uh, called the National High School Invitational with me over the weekend. and um, We he, love NHSI. He, we love it. We love it. Yeah. Great event. Um, yeah. he, he mentioned to me, because he was looking at ACC updates while we're in the booth. and um, <laughs> Can't he, get enough. Yeah, can't get enough. And he <laughs> mentioned to me, this is a guy who's like a f- former big league all-star, you know, did national TV packages right right after his yeah. playing career was done. I mean, he's seen a lot of really, really good baseball. And Larry was like, I don't know that I've ever seen a college hitter as hot as him right now. And, and I mean, he you deserves know, it. it. He and, deserves and, it. He put the yeah, work in. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't take that lightly because, again, in this very league at the beginning of the season, we had Drew Burris. And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago at the beginning of the season, we had Tommy White. Like, (laughs) we've seen really, really, really hot hitters. Um, And Larry obviously was was privy to those. And but he says Kurtz is is as red hot as he's he's ever seen a hitter. And you're right. Like he puts in the work. It it. um, Can I add one more thing, too, that I don't know if people realize is that he is 16 homers away from tying Brock Wilkin for the all-time home (laughs) run crown in Wake Forest history. And do I think he can hit 16 or 17 home runs with the rest of this season? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put anything past Nick Kurtz at this point. A healthy Nick Kurtz is a really dangerous Nick Kurtz. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's just, it's wild because, you know, two weeks ago, 
you wouldn't have thought it even possible for him to be <laughs> in in the mix for the career home run record. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned Brock Wilkin. Can we send some well wishes yeah. for him? Um, yes. Horrible, horrible incident. He got hit with a pitch in the face, um, 94 miles per hour, just not fun stuff. I I, I saw the announcement from the, the team was that after the swelling went down, it was going to require some surgery, facial reconstruction of some kind. But there's good news, like no vision impairment. I think they expect him to to bounce back and, and recover fully. But like that's a friend of the program, former guest of ours here on ACC Baseball, et cetera. One of the great dudes to come out of ACC Baseball in recent years. So um, yes. well, Brock, hopefully a speedy recovery and, and no yes. major complications. Uh, oh, my goodness. I hope the same. And I hope that ball hurt, too. I hope that ball felt real bad as yeah. well. I would listen. It it might have hit him, but you know that there is just as much force coming off of it because that kid is made of stone. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That's a good way to put it. Good way to put it. Um, any anything else on on Wake Forest before? You know, just just in in the in in the conversation of them becoming what we thought they were going to be. I like that you mentioned Seaver King. I was very bold after seeing him with the collegiate national team and, and kind of thought he would be, um, well, I don't remember exactly what, how I phrased it. I said a lot of things about Seaver King. I was <laughs> like, he might win player of the year. He might lead the conference. Are you the average. president of the Seaver King fan club? I think so. I think so. I called him Mookie Betts, just like nonchalantly. Wow. Like Aaron Fit was was filling in, and I I, I didn't even mean to make the comp, but I, okay. he, he came in. He came in to play it short for when Merrick got hurt for them, and I just like without even thinking about it, just unconsciously, I was like, oh yeah, he's Mookie Betts. And so, yeah. um, anyways, I love seeing him come up in big spots for obvious reasons. I'm glad you mentioned that. Cole Rowland on the back end of the bullpen is a name we didn't mention. That's that's a yes. big piece for them. I um, think I what I would say is to that point is that the the conversation that I had with Tom Walter and that everyone has had is that because Cole Rowland was out, because Crawford Wade was still working his way back, that their bullpen was being taxed. Their starters weren't going deep enough into games. Their bull, bullpen was being taxed. It was very much like Duke last season, even though it wasn't necessarily the plan like wake forest doesn't want to use the opener they don't want to have to resort to that but their bullpen was being taxed and now they have rolling back and weighed back and i think that that is a difference maker when when we talk about baseball at every level the back of the bullpen is the least sexy thing especially the middle relievers but guess what if you can't get to your cole roland if you can't get to your fireman then nothing else matters and so i think that that's key for wake as they move forward and again it, it's not like the rest of their schedule is a cakewalk they're gonna have to get through it because the acc is really good and you and i were talking that you don't know who's gonna win on any day virginia tech the, one of the best offensive teams in the whole nation. They were stifled against Chase Burns because he's Chase Burns. And so you just never really know who can win on any day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with that in mind, uh, that's a perfect segue into teams that we're not 100% sure what to make of them. <laughs> yes. I, that's a pro. That's a pro segue right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, NC State is chief among these teams. For yes. me, I love their group. The 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 starting pitching is it, it, like it's a rotation that maybe some of the most maybe the, the most confusing element to their streakiness yeah. is their their level of experience that they have, and and that's both in the lineup and in the pitching staff. Um, without an injury to Matt Willidson, mm. their rotation would have been some variation of Sam Highfill, Logan Whitaker, and Matt Willitson, which feels like it's been their starting rotation for five years, Danny, right? It's just, <laughs> yes. it, they, and they're all great. They're all great. They're all the same dudes. Um, it's been a, a delight to see Sam Highfill get back to his, his, mm -hmm. his peak form this season. And Whitaker has battled injuries, but when he is healthy, he is as consistent as they come. Um, but, it, but it's a, it's a team that I, I don't know what to make of them because they're so, 
they're so streaky. They get two of three out of from number two Clemson. Um, you were in Raleigh for the Duke series. Yeah. That was a big one for them. And then they'll just not have a good weekend here or there. And it's it's a lot of back and forth pushing and pulling in that way, as opposed to I think a lot of the 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 teams that we sort of associate with the top of the league who are just a, like more consistent. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know, I don't know what to make of NC State. They're good. They're a regional team. Yeah. Past that, I'm not 100 percent sure. Like what to expect. You're like the third person to say those exact words. I just can't figure them out. They're just keeping <laughs> everyone on their toes. They want to keep everyone guessing right now. What's the fun in being consistent, right? I I kind of look at the schedule and I'm like, are they playing down a little bit to the weaker teams in the conference. And then when it comes to the better competition and those higher ranked teams that sometimes they're turning a gear on and playing up to that level, is that possible? Because I know that that is absolutely something that happens within the game, especially within the conference. And, you know, you had the Friday night Duke game. I had the Saturday Duke game, right? And both incredible wins. I was stunned to see them come back and beat Duke on Saturday during that series. I was stunned to see Charlie Bielinson fall like that. I, I couldn't believe what was happening in front of my eyes. And two of the key things for me, like Jacob Cozart and Eli Serrano, feel like every time there's a moment to be clutch, they are in that moment. They are the guys. They are the playmakers. But in the same breath, this is a team that they don't hit a ton of home runs. They don't score a ton of runs. They don't strike out very often, but it does. The juggernaut makes zero sense. Like they don't, they absolutely make no sense. And if you're trying to look at their numbers, like, you know, if you're sorting through the stats and you're trying to figure out, well, they did this here and they did this against Clemson and this against Duke, but, but then they, they got swept by Louisville. Like help me, help me understand what is going on because Sam Heifel is really good. Logan Whitaker is a dog. That is a veteran guy out there for this team, but, they they don't put their pants on the same way every day. I, I'm not sure. Maybe they need to come up with some kind of um, superstition or something. I don't know. But but I they're they're as consistent as you know the days of the week right now. Yeah, yeah. I I um, I, well I I'm going to add one of the things that I know about Please. them, and yes. it is Elliot Avent, and oh. I trust his <laughs> gut about as much as I would trust any college baseball coach's gut just with oh, yeah. instinctive decisions and um, in-game coaching and, and things like that. And yeah. sometimes it's very obvious he's got a stronger gut than most of us because he'll, he'll, he'll ride a guy longer on the mound or what he does. You're so right. And I think, it, you, know, <laughs> you know, it just occurred to me a story that I heard about Elliot one time. Uh, oh. literally about maybe his, the strength of his gut. And um, <laughs> so, okay, okay quick, quick. Yes. There's, there's a former, um, former Wake Forest communications guy. I don't remember his specific title, but he was the top communications guy at Wake Forest for a long time, semi-retired. And in that, in, in this new phase of life, he now does media relations for the High Point Rockers. And awesome. his name's Steve Shutt, a wonderful person. He was at New Mexico State the same time that Elliot was. And in okay. fact, they lived together. I think <laughs> it went Elliot lived with Steve and his wife. They just had like okay. an extra room or whatever. And Steve told me a story one time about how sometimes he would he would come home or or whatever. Cause that I mean, you know, they're both thankless long hour positions and he would come home and it would be like 2 a.m. And he said, Elliot would have the grill fired up <laughs> like out on their back right. patio. And, 2 a.m. And Steve, 2 a.m. And Steve's kind of like, Elliot, what are you, what are you doing? He's like, well, I haven't eaten anything. And you know, I was feeling steak. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so 2 a.m. Like, Copious amounts of red meat at 2 a.m. is sort of the perfect analogy for the the gut <laughs> instinct that I'm talking about with Elliot. Yeah, Aver. yeah. yeah. Um, that's the <laughs> that's the third thing I know about NC State is that he's got the strongest gut in the proverbial sense. 
Um, they got of, a dog in them. They do. Like they yeah. have fight in them. And you've seen that. They're close games. They're clutch hitting. It's just everything else in between. I feel like maybe they make it a little hard on themselves is what it is, right? Instead of being more consistent, they've made it harder on themselves and their schedule doesn't make a ton of sense with their series wins and losses. But you don't bet against Elliot Amen, that's for sure. Or his gut. <laughs> or his gut. No, never. Never against his gut. It, it's, um, it is they, in some instances, I talk about their experience, but they've also got some youth too. Like mm -hmm. um, Shane Van Dam has looked really good of late. And the weekend you were in Raleigh, he had this freak thing happen where he, he got yeah. hit with a line drive and batting practice and was in concussion protocol. It's good to see he's like out of that. Mm -hmm. I know there are several players in the conference who have dealt with weird stuff like that. Um, yeah. But the youth, and we've talked about this a lot with North Carolina on this show, mm. you hit, there's a threshold. We're about to get there where it becomes conflicting ideas. And mm. one is that young players, freshmen in particular, at some point in the season, they don't play like freshmen anymore yeah. because they've been in it and they've adjusted and, and that sort of thing. And they kind of become a little bit more who they who they are as players. But then there's a freshman wall in some cases where it at some point becomes, wow, this is the longest season continuously I've played in my life. Yeah. So it's those two things battling, right? Does it click yeah. for the freshman at some point? Is that about the same time that maybe physically they, they hit a little bit of a wall and, and returns diminish some? Yes. It seems like the, the young guys for NC State are – the former and it's mm. it's clicking for them i think that's at least the case with van dam he's becoming more comfortable and I, I guess it's probably easier for a reliever as opposed to a starting pitcher which is again the context in which we talk about it this way with with north carolina um but i think for nc state that it's coming around maybe not rounding out into shape in the same way that you know wake forest is rounding out into shape but they are getting better as the season goes I think. Yeah. I think. Look, you take a series against number two. Yeah. I'd say that you've figured a couple of things out. I think the key is the consistent part of it and what is working during that time. Right. They, they scored a bunch of runs in, in Friday and Saturday really early in their two wins. And, and I think that is ultimately what is going to be key for them is putting a bunch up early. Right. And letting your pitching staff, go to work. And as far as like the freshman part goes, I think what is so cool is seeing impactful freshmen in the college game and, and watching them thrive. And it doesn't always work out that way. I think about Wyatt Langford and his freshman season at Florida and yeah. think about how he got, I think he got four pinch hit at bats and one hit. I think that's what it was. And he, he didn't play and there were other guys in front of him, but even when he did, he wasn't doing a ton. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes teams need their freshmen to step up. Mayor Houston last year was a huge contributor, right? He was batting ninth for Wake last season. Now he's leading off for them. But they let him get that in that nine hole and just get used to things and learn and grow in that way. And I think the thing, too, is, is like you – Teams like expecting their freshmen to be a Drew Burris doesn't always work out that way. It almost never works out that way because the ACC is really tough and college baseball is really hard. But when your freshmen can start clicking and just get a little bit of confidence, I think that that like you often see in regionals and super regionals, it's a freshman who maybe has a, a sack sack RBI, right? Or they do the little things. They don't need to hit the home run or, or hit the two run double, but they are able to advance runners. And the all the little parts of the game is what matters in college. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. That's well said. Um, with with North Carolina in mind, I actually, before we we hopped on here, I talked to Scott Forbes because I've got Coastal at yeah. UNC tomorrow. Tell me. Um, which will be fun. And is coincidentally like the fourth time I've had Coastal this year and the first time I've had UNC. I was joking with Scott about oh, it. Oh, that's uh, funny. Yeah. So they that's a team that's feeling really good about where they are. And yeah. I'm I'm walking into this this home game for them. 
immediately after they set the program record with 27 <laughs> consecutive home victories in a row. Awesome. Um, that matters, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you're you're playing yourself, you're playing well enough on the road to put yourself in the, the mix for a top eight seed. I don't know that they'll get it, but they're they're in the mix. If if you go into a regional as a top eight seed and you are still unbeaten, yeah, at home, yeah, I like what wins out your your knack for for winning at Boschimer Stadium or the added pressure that comes with that. And I, I don't I don't mean that to say this is a team that I think really cares about yeah. that. Like they, I think. I think most of them hardly knew that it was a record or that they're still undefeated at home. Like they, it's just not, it's very Scott Forbes of them to just yeah. not care at all about numbers, accolades, achievements. Like they're just, they're just doing the day by day approach and, and trying to win. Um, what, like what, what do you, how do you think about their success at home and how it applies to the greater context of their season and, and going forward in the, into the postseason? I think if you can't win at home, then you can't win in general. If you can't win at your home ballpark, then we have much bigger fish to fry. So the fact that they are on what I think is the positive side of loving home, playing well at home, have this record at home, whether you knew it was happening or not, is a huge deal. I think about, I'll, I'll equate it to last season in the Houston Astros who couldn't win at home, especially in the postseason. And that came back to bite them. You can't win at your home ballpark in front of your home fans when you're sleeping in your own bed and you know where the clubhouse is and you know where all your trinkets are and, and how to get out to the field and, and get to the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like all those little things matter. And so for North Carolina to have a streak like this, but obviously home is important to them. I think this is a huge deal, especially if they can secure a top eight. That for me is a difference maker when you have the advantage of being at home and you know how to use your advantage. It's not just that they're home. It's that they have unlocked a new level of playing and they, and they feel really good. There's room for improvement. As you said, on the road, I think the pitching in particular Mm -hmm. Definitely has room for improvement when they go on the road. And I think that's something that's kind of bitten them a little bit. So if they can kind of get that in order and find a way to make it not as comfortable, it's never going to be as comfortable as home at the Bosch. But I do think that if you can improve that a little bit, maybe you get that that top eight seed. And then we're, we're talking about a whole new ball game for this club. And, and they've, you know, they've kind of like had their ebbs and flows this season too. I, I heard, I or not heard, but I read that Scott Forbes said something like the guys didn't really know that it was happening. And I think that that's for the best. Like they are mm -hmm. laser focused on winning in this season. And while it's awesome and we get to talk about it, I, I think that it's better that they don't know. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're right. And I mean, you know, Forbes is, um, in this community, this college baseball community, famously unaware, indifferent yeah. toward <laughs> yeah. toward accolades, right? Like yeah. you know, he hits a career milestone. He's like, "What? Oh, I don't, I don't, I, don't I, I remember doing um, what? What was it? Uh, I I talked to him. Maybe it was in the preseason on on this show, and yeah. and I was like, "This is your your X for you total at, at North Carolina." He's like. Oh man, I don't even know. <laughs> you know, he's just he doesn't even think about that sort of stuff. And you know, if he if he asserts himself and and does some math real quick, he's like, okay, well, I got here in this year, and you know, I can figure it out. But I'm you know, over just, here, like, okay, I moved to New York City in this year, and I've been here this many years. Okay, ten right. years, <laughs> ten years. I'm a New Yorker. Like, don't don't get it twisted. I know exactly how long <laughs> I've been here. Right. So, but he's, he's, it's so funny that the, the way that he preaches process yeah. and um, he, he acts on it too, right? He practices what he, he preaches that. Yeah. yeah. They, I, um, they, they're sponges. 
those kids are sponges. I think people don't always take that into account and they just assume a kid gets to campus and he either thinks he knows everything or he may be not be, he won't be as malleable to, to the coaching staff, but those kids are sponges. And when they respect their coach, you can tell, like you can see it within the team. You can tell with the group that he has, but um, there's a reason that, that, he recruits the way he does and he, and he gets like, I think it's a, a pretty specific brand of kid that's going there and wants to put their head down. You know, it's Duke vibes as well. It's that blue collar vibe, but um, yeah. it's the kid who just wants to play and get better. And I appreciate that. Yeah, no doubt. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling from the list of, of things we were texting about. Um, I said Georgia Tech sort of in the same category as NC state. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know that I would have said that Thursday. Yeah. But now I'm thinking like dot, dot, dot. Are they going to mess around and make a regional? I, I, It's a group that I like. Yeah. Ton of if, fun. A lot of fun. If we can get Drew Burris into a postseason setting, obviously that's great for everyone. 100%. I, I don't know if they've got all the chops. I don't know if yeah. they can put it all together. I had them against Pitt last weekend on the road. And it was, listen, it was a pretty good game. I, I thought the pitching staffs um, for Sunday were really, really competitive. I just don't know if they can put it all together in comparison to the rest of the conference. But listen, getting Drew Burris to the postseason with more eyes and and bigger platforms and more people to see the kid. Of course, I want to see that. There's no doubt. I mean, there's a plethora of guys on that squad that I think need more eyeballs on them. And, and if they make it to the postseason, like better for them. I, I think I still have some questions and I still need to be shown a couple of things to feel that though. Yeah. Who, who is near? So we've got seven in the top 25. In yeah. the ACC, good teams outside of that. Yeah, I st I still think, and I've been saying this for a few weeks now, Danny. I I still think it's entirely possible for the ACC to get as many as ten into regionals. Okay. Partially, it's because some other conferences who would typically have more in are down this year. Yeah. Um. And I think probably if the ACC could potentially get 10, it means that the SEC could potentially get 11 and break the record. Um, <laughs> and that's without me like looking at the SEC standings and counting 11 teams. Uh -huh. But I just, I would assume that that's You're what assuming. that means. Yeah. Um, so that would mean Georgia Tech is getting in, is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Okay. Who what? who's who's in that mix like outside of those seven teams that are ranked? Like who, who would you who are you buying as a regional team in that in that group? Because I also thought, man, I've been heartbroken over the past three weeks or so because I really liked Miami. I I really did. And I just it, it's it's so steep of a mountain for them to climb now to to get in. Um the last few weekends have really done them in, which is a bummer because I feel like every single loss of theirs is by a run. Yes, it's, I agree. Like, I agree. They are so they are so many just like or so few. They're so few just like swing plays away from being up five games in the win column than from where they are now. And that changes everything, right? Like, and they've just they've played every good team they've played at least one of the games has been really really close when they've lost it so i feel bad and i like their fight um that's that's a team that again they're they're kind of they're not in the grouping that i'm talking about um, okay i like maybe, listen i feel like to your point you make a great point is that every time you turn around and you're like oh yeah miami they're walking off or they're in extra innings and they're walking off or they have a go ahead and they've got that mark like magic right their social media is exceptional like i'm following along like i want to be a part of this team like what do they yeah. have like how have they figured this out and i think they're a little young 
right now. I think that their pitching staff, I think they've, they've just had, they had a lot of changes, right? They've got a new head coach and I, I think they've just kind of taking some time to figure out who they are and they're still doing that. I mean, six and 12 in the ACC right now, isn't going to get the job done. And they are probably just one swing away or one play away from being a completely different ball game or having uh, a winning record right now. I think they are a ton of fun. I want to see this team like back together for one more year. I would be so interested to see this group together for one more year. Um, I I'm rooting for them. I feel the same way as you. I just don't know if it's enough right now to squeak in there. Yeah. So, so, it's it's more wishful thinking than anything with Georgia Tech, and obviously after this past weekend, they looked pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm buying Louisville at this point. I just like their. <laughs> I like. I they're also young, but I, I have really, Louisville I, Miami I, this weekend. So tell me more. I really like their young players. Wow. And, I we just we just talked earlier about or mentioned NHSI, um, yeah. another event in Cary, yeah, the PDP League where yeah. I was introduced with to um, Zion Rose, and he I, might, I just I I get in this thing, Danny, you know, and, and listeners know, like towards the beginning of the year, everybody's a regional team to me, you know. I, I'm, just, I'm so encouraged. <laughs> you get a regional, and you get a. I'm so encouraged by all of them. And at some point I have to, I have to let the dream die for, for each team one at a time. Right. Yeah. Um, but like, I am such a believer in Louisville. I, 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 I like Boston college's group and they're that's gritty. In a different way. They're super gritty. That's in a different way because I think I like them mostly because of their experience. Yeah. Yeah. So Inter Donato inherited a, a lot of Gambino players mm-hmm. and a lot of them. It's, it's the, it's largely the same group that did make a regional last year and gritty's the word for it, right? They, mm-hmm. they just win games in ways that um, also I love Cam Leary. I mentioned Zion Rose, Cam Leary. I'm just like, this is me just like I, naming I dudes who are my favorite players. Leary um, had the walk off your walk off home run. Yeah, two weekends in a row. Yeah. Uh, they just – they find ways. So I like Boston College in terms of of this grouping that I'm – I'm just rambling now at this point about the teams that I hope get in and play well enough down the stretch to. I think what really you're saying is that the ACC has attracted – some of the best talent in the entire country and the recruiting jobs that have been done by these teams in the ACC are exceptional. And they're bringing in players with a ton of personality, a ton of talent, a ton of potential guys who want to work hard. Zion Rosen is an incredible example of that. He ends up on campus and this kid is so hungry and wants to make his team better. And he's a ton of fun. And, and he's a kid from Chicago and like, he's had to kind of work his way through, right? Chicago kids, you're in the Midwest, you're in Illinois, right? No one's coming to Illinois to see you play. And so this kid's been grinding it out for a long time. I think the first time I met him, he was 13. And he's been the same kid ever since. He's been catching his whole life. And so it's like this brand of kid that's coming to the ACC that's so talented, high draft pick caliber guys. Um, And so you want to see all of them in the postseason. That's it. Nobody, you don't want to send anybody home. Like you don't want anyone's heart to break. I don't either. Like I feel the same way. I, I am attached is not the right word, but I'm protective. I think especially of some of the athletes that I am lucky enough to cover when they're in high school. And all I want is for them to succeed. I just want the absolute best for them. I don't want them to ever lose or strike out or have any bad days. And I know that's not how it works. Like (laughs) adversity is good, but there's a part of me that is rooting like for the person people the sport is so hard, right? Most of these kids will not go play major league baseball. So I want their experience in college to be top notch and I want them to have a ton of success and, and be the hero and, and have those moments. So I, I feel the same. Um, but I also love parody and I want to see as many teams from as many conferences get into the tournament and fight for a spot. Yeah. 
no that's it's well it's well said we we have sort of a rooting interest here at this show so um that's just a little bit of one it got me thinking just now i'm I'm just rambling off players aaron fit does his all fit team i maybe there's something there i could you know gravy and i combined could do like an all all etc team um yeah i don't know what the criteria would be but I would find a way to put Cam Leary on that team because I, I love Cam Leary. Um, um, there's a mustache on Duke. I am blanking on the name right now. Is it Ben uh, Miller? It's Ben Miller's mustache. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Sh- Ben's on the team. Put that's my pick. If I get a yeah. pick, Ben's on the team. <laughs> can I? Can I? I don't know how. Okay, I'm sure Ben would be okay with me sharing this. I. What series was it? I've had Duke a lot early this season and um it was it was in Raleigh so that was the week he had gone to his former elementary school yes and read to students to the kids. yeah so I mean obviously the way he hits he does he he has the mustache like he's it's easy to like him as a player anyway yeah and um I I walked by I was going to talk to um Elliot he was in the batting cage at NC State and uh, Duke's team was about to go onto the field and I just walked by Ben and I complimented the mustache. Okay. And I was like, now, you know, though, like the longer it gets, cause he went from sort of bare knuckle boxer to it's got some length to it now. And it's like borderline, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like dastardly cartoon character. Right. So I told him, I warned him jokingly. I said, you know, the longer it gets, the creepier it gets. You just mm-hmm. got to be okay with that. Are you willing to embrace it? And he joked, he was so quick witted with it. He joked, he's like, well, they let me read to kids at an elementary school today. So I think I'm, I think, I, I think I'm good. <laughs> oh my God. And I was just like, man, I liked you already. That good was point. funny. Yeah, that was hilarious. So he's, he's probably on the all et cetera team or whatever yes. version. Put him of on team. there. It's my but pick. We, we make up, not to mention he's hitting. In- yeah. Incredible. But like, <laughs> Like when you get like sometimes they close up and it's just like it's so curly and long and it's it's pretty incredible. <laughs> I'm a fan. Nice. I don't even know where I was headed next. Um Well, we were talking about getting all these guys. You want to see more teams. Obviously, you want more yeah. ACC teams yeah. in the postseason and teams that are like gonna be on the edge, right? They're gonna be right mm-hmm. um in like in the conversation, are they in the bubble? Are they out of the bubble? Are they on the bubble? Like whatever word you want to use for the bubble, they're bubble teams, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so, okay. I think we were, we were pretty much done. We put a bow that. on the bubble. Let's put, put a bow on that. Yeah. I want to, I want to quickly shout out the action clock. And okay. here's why, because I mentioned I did the national high school invitational yes. over the weekend. You've given them lots of love, by the way. Are they paying you for all these? Always. Um, well, I mean, USA Baseball is paying me. That's I'm, yes. I'm, 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 <laughs> good. We'll, we'll put that out there. They pay good. me. Um, all these shout outs. So these are high school games, obviously. Yes. And I've grown accustomed to not calling a lot of high school games, mostly college. And when I fill in for the Durham Bulls, that's AAA. So they have an action clock now, too. Yeah. Shout out to the action clock. Like you don't you don't realize how great it is until you don't have it. And yeah. it was an awesome game in the final of this high school tournament on Saturday. Yeah. But when one guy throws a four hit shutout in a three to nothing mm. seven inning game that they don't even play in the bottom of the seventh because the yeah. home team was ahead. Yeah. And it nearly takes three hours. It's just it's it's noticeable. It's noticeable. And the pace is what was noticeable, not the final yeah. number there. Like I'll watch baseball forever. Yeah. I just would prefer that the pace is up there. So anyways, that's my quick, that's my action quick clock. shout out is Love the action, the action clock. clock. Yeah. I, I started to, to get into the nitty gritty of certain players, but we can, we can save people from that. Bryce Rayner is really good. Seth Hernandez is the kid who we threw the shot. Out. Okay. All yes. right. Um, <laughs> lastly, Danny, yeah. uh, Whenever the other Danny, Danny Graves is here, we finish, we finish the show with Hall of Name. And now that is a Danny centric element. So I, okay. I want to, this is, this won't be Hall of Name, but I do want to finish on a Danny centric note. Okay. Um, you know how I feel about the work that you do. So I just want to ask a question like, 
when you interview someone, a player, a coach, whoever, this is yeah. just like digging into the journalistic brain of mm -hmm. the wonderful Danny Wexelman. When you interview someone, what is like the one, this can be as broad or specific as you want it to be. What's the one thing that if you get that, you walk away knowing it was, it was great. Oh, if I make someone cry. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I get that, um, I think that anytime I can get somebody to share deep and thoughtful notes on their family is, is a huge win for me. I think that kids are pretty close to the vest when it comes to people in their life, especially if maybe their family dynamic looks a little bit different than everybody else's and isn't as traditional maybe. And so when I get an opportunity to kind of dive into family dynamics and important people in the lives of these kids, and often it's not just mom and dad, right? It's like a grandma or a grandpa. Mm -hmm. um, Steven Milas at uh, LSU um, I learned about his grandma a few years ago from him and got to share like a deeply touching story about his relationship with her. And that for me was like really special. I think that when you trust somebody with your family, like I don't trust everyone with my family details. Not everyone knows everything about me and my family. Um, and you can't go searching on the internet for it. It's pretty special to me. So if I'm going to share it with you, then I think that in turn, you sharing that with me means that I probably did something right in my job. And and then maybe I get a note from a parent. I got a note. I got a text from uh, Anthony Volpe's mom the other day. I'll, I'll do a little humble brag because I was talking about him on SNY. Yeah. And, he's and tearing it up. Like he's awesome. It. He's killing it. And she sent me a note and that means a lot. I feel like my relationships are like the most important thing about my job. And so, yeah, just to build that trust with a kid is, is really important to me. Does that answer the question? That, yeah, that's a fantastic yeah. answer to the question. Thank okay. you for indulging me there. Um, I didn't okay. prep you for that like I did the other stuff. So you did I well survived. to, to yeah. do that on the fly. Um, <laughs> well, cool. Your maiden voyage with us here on ACC Baseball, et cetera. Hopefully there will be more appearances. Danny. <laughs> Thanks so much for the time. Um, I got to get you to, you get a, stuff of your own, shows and interviews of your own to do. So um, go do that. Thanks again. Remind mm -hmm. I'm going to remind everybody before we get off here, uh, yeah. at ACCBSBETC on social media. Subscribe, rate, review, all those fun things. You know how those go. Like, um, share, love. <laughs> lo love, yes. Love it. Love it all. Yeah. Um, it, it might not be an option, but find a way. Find <laughs> a way it. to love it. <laughs> love our show. Um, I love that Danny Wexelman filled in for Danny Graves today. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys next time.